Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of these factors obviously are used, a, you know, a lot in investment products now. So there, you know, could be an issue of some overcrowding happening. Um, that's one of the theories as to why maybe some of these factors have become less um, effective over time. But as you, I think, pointed out in the article, we would need a lot longer period than a decade to make the conclusion that these factors aren't effective anymore. That's right. So if you look at the long-term data, round number out there, if you want to say there's 100 years of data supporting the factors, well, if you have 100 years, how many years is it going to take before I can say definitively this factor no longer works? And Corey Hofstein of Newfound, Newfound Research did a piece on this a while back where he looked at that. And what he found is for all of these factors, the amount of time it would take to say for sure that they don't work anymore is longer than most investors' lifetimes. And so if, if you want to use pure data to evaluate whether you should abandon a factor, you're not going to be able to do it because by the time you realize the factor no longer works, your investing lifetime is likely already over. And, and that's one of the challenges during these periods of struggle is you can't, you know, especially quantitative investors like me, I want to be able to, I want to be able to put this into a formula and I want to be able to say, all right, this is not working anymore. Here's my calculation to back it up. And you can't do that. You know, there, there's definitely some art to this on top of the science and you have to make some judgment calls on your own because the data is never going to 100% support you to say this factor is dead. So if that's the case, then, you know, how, how's an investor supposed to, what amount of time do you think an investor should give, you know, a factor-based strategy? I mean, is there any, and there, I, there's probably no, like, right answer here, but, you know, in your mind, you think it's something like at least 10 years or even maybe longer, which is tough. Yeah, you know, I used I used to think five years was a fair, when I first started out was probably a fair period to evaluate investment strategy. Then I sort of over the middle of my career, you know, got to more like 10 years. And now this is something Matt Faber's talked about a lot on his podcast. I think I agree with him. I think it's probably 20 years now. I think you probably should not be getting involved in one of these factor based value strategies, at least for a significant portion of your portfolio, unless you're willing to sit through 20 years if it doesn't work. And, and we're seeing that right now. I mean, it, it might very well be values had a bad 10 year period. You know, value might very well have a bad 15 year period. So it just shows you how long these periods can go where it doesn't work. And if, and if you can't stay the course during those periods, you're not going to get, you know, the positive return when it, when it ends. Because one of the things about these factors is when they do come back, they can come back in very short periods of time. And so you can have to sit through these huge periods of pain and then all the benefit might come in a very short period of time. And so if, if you're waiting to hop back on the factor when it's back in favor, you may be too late. You, know, you may miss a lot of those gains. And so that's the hard part about this is, you know, it re you probably do need 20 years to evaluate one of these things. And you have to sit through really long periods in order to enjoy what can be very short periods where it does very well. 